Hi everybody and happy Sunday. I'm KHOU 11 meteorologist Pat Catlin here with a look at your tropical update. We're doing these updates every night at 8 p.m. Whether there's something in the Atlantic or the tropics or whether there isn't. And it's just to keep a pulse on what's going on out there so that you're always up to date. So here's the latest. We do have two things that we're watching. Of course, we've still got Hurricane Aaron here just to the north of the Greater Antilles, north of Hispaniola, so that's Haiti and the Dominican Republic. And then behind it, I mean thousands of miles back to the east, we've got another tropical wave that just came off the west coast of Africa. This has now been bumped up to 40% odds of development within the next seven days. So we're still about a week away from this thing being impactful to any area. Notice it has to get into this shaded portion of the map to actually reach conditions that are favorable for development. So we've still got some time to watch this, but we will talk about it here in just a minute. Let's start with the latest on Hurricane Erin, though. As of the 7 p.m. advisory this evening, it is still a powerful Category 3 hurricane with wind sustained at 125 miles per hour, and it's still moving west of northwest at about 15 miles per hour. Uh, tropical storm warnings right now are up for the Turks and Caicos. Why tropical storm warnings and not hurricane warnings? Because we're not expecting Aaron to make landfall in the Turks and Caicos. Instead, it's going to pass just to the north. And so we're not going to see the strongest wind field, those hurricane force winds, move over these islands. Instead, you will get tropical storm force winds. So again, that's why these are not hurricane warnings. So let's time the track out here. This is the official track from the National Hurricane Center. By tomorrow afternoon, we are expecting this storm to regain category four status with winds sustained at 145 miles per hour. From there, it continues that very slow turn from west northwest to northwest to eventually just straight north. And then somewhere around the Carolinas here, between the Carolinas and Bermuda, we start that northeast turn out to sea. So Aaron's still expected to thread the needle here between the eastern seaboard and Bermuda which would really just be quite the twist of fate and a great twist of fate that this storm gets so powerful but never ends up impacting any areas of land. Look at the buoy reports though nearby the storm right now. This buoy in particular here just to the north on the north side of the system, 28 foot waves being reported right now with winds just at 47 miles per hour. So, I mean, we're talking tropical storm winds, but 28 foot waves are just incredible. Uh, and that just has to do with the power of the storm. And you can see in the last few frames here that eye now starting to clear out. Through the course of the day, the eye has pretty much been covered over uh, as it's gone through what's known as an eye wall replacement cycle. Now that that eye is starting to clear out, I think through the overnight, we're going to see the storm restrengthen and eventually get to category four status for tomorrow. Down through the Antilles waves, not too bad, five to seven feet. And again, the wind is moving offshore, for, so we're not expecting any major swells here on the north side of the islands. And then 14 foot waves on that buoy uh, well to the east of the center of circulation. Let's talk about this storm's history especially when it comes to the forecast, because I think this is what has had a lot of people on edge over the past few days, is the fact that the actual path, which is this black line here, has stayed pretty far south of the actual forecast cones. And you can see this, when I hit play on this animation, you're gonna see every single forecast cone that has ever been issued on this storm, and they show up in blue. And notice how that black line has really stayed consistently on the southern edge of that envelope of those forecasts. And so a lot of folks seeing that have been like, well, gosh, you know, is this going to stay far enough south that it keeps going west eventually into the Turks and Caicos and to the Bahamas and eventually into, you know, parts of the U.S. like Florida? And that's a reasonable concern to have. But what has always been true in this forecast is the presence of a cold front, a trough coming in across the East Coast that will eventually scoop up the energy from Aaron and pull it to the north. So that forecast, even though it is a little farther west than initially you know, thought with some of those earlier forecasts, we still do anticipate that hard turn to the north and then eventually to the north and east out towards uh, the North Atlantic and the shipping lanes. So here it is on FutureTrack. This is a high resolution FutureTrack model. 
doing pretty well with the current location of the storm really ramps up in strength here tomorrow and then starts that north turn now it will be a bit of a nail biter I think for the um, the outer banks here of the Carolinas that said I don't think we see direct impacts but you're going to see some really strong winds here and also some big swells we're talking about huge waves and probably some beach erosion uh, from the mid-Atlantic all the way down through the Carolina coast before Aaron takes that sharp turn off towards the north and east and you can actually see it here with all of the model plots so we take all the different computer models that we have for this system and we tweak certain things in those equations until we get minorly different outputs. And look, <clears throat> even when you've got a hundred different outputs, they all take the storm north and then turn it to the north and east. So we do expect the storm by the middle part of the week to pass between the Carolinas and, the, and uh, Bermuda and then eventually go out to sea. That's not the only game in town though. Now we go out to the east and we've got a new tropical wave that just moved off the west coast of Africa. It's not really well organized right now, but we are expecting here within the next five to seven days, once it gets into that shaded region of the Atlantic, for some sort of development to happen. So let's follow the life cycle of this wave. What we've got plotted here is just tropical organization or spin in the atmosphere. We call it vorticity. We'll just think of it as spin. And then the black lines here indicate lines of pressure. So what you've got to look for on this map is where all these ribbons of red and yellow and orange become more compact into a ball of red. So we put this into motion and watch. We start to see some circulation here and there's that ball of red that I was talking about. Now, whether or not this can actually get organized will depend on what the atmospheric conditions in this part of the world look like a week from today. So next Sunday, August 24th. However, by that point, it will be in our backyard, right? It'll be just to the north of the Caribbean here, again, getting close to the Turks and Caicos and the East Coast. So that will be the next system to watch as we go through the next week. And this is just all a reminder that we're getting close to the peak of hurricane season. We're not even there yet, right? So today is August 17th. The peak of the season is still three weeks away, September 10th. Okay, that's when we climatologically or historically see the highest number of hurricanes and tropical storms. That's just an average. Does that mean that we could see it more backloaded towards October? Absolutely. And there have been years in the past where we've seen it more front-loaded, but typically this is the time of the year when things start to ramp up. So no threats right now to the United States, no threats to us here in Southeast Texas, but a good reminder that as we get closer to the peak of hurricane season, one, you want to stay on top of the forecast, so check in with us every day. Again, 8 p.m. We'll do these in-depth live updates here on KHOU 11 Plus. We're posting all over social media as well. And just stay on top of your plan as well with your family. Make sure that you guys are ready to go in case something were to pop up last minute and head our way. But again, right now, no threats to the United States. We'll be here with you every day with updates, but that's the latest right now on what's happening in the tropics.